Yeah, you are visible, Devjit. Hey, hi, Devjit. This is Ramesh. I am working with the tech system from past two and a half years as an architect. Okay. And here, my portfolio, I am handling multiple projects, both Java, J2 related stuff, and okay. cloud, AWS, and Azure. Okay. This is about me. Can you briefly tell me about yourself, your role, and responsibilities? Yeah, so basically, I'm currently working at ENY. So in ENY, I've worked with uh, three uh, different clients. So currently, I'm associated with... Uh, with your video is stuck. Can you see my video? Yeah. Yeah, now it's okay. Fine. Is it fine? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So uh, basically, I'm currently associated with ENY. And uh, uh, here I have worked with three clients. So the most recent client is with Wells Fargo. So uh, where I, I was working with soft check uh, project. So basically, uh, whenever any developer made some changes or commit the changes, then before actually going for real deployment, it checks for the vulnerability scans. So it will check for black duck scan, cigarette scan, check mark scan. So if everything else is passed, like count is zero, there is no vulnerability count. And it will be allowed for deployment otherwise it will go back to uh, developer for making changes so uh, these type of checks we have worked upon so basically there are two things here app adherence and uh, vulnerability scan so within vulnerability scan there is black duck secret scan and check mark scan and within app adherence there is save one save two scan so it will calculate basically the overall status so if overall status is passed uh, based upon these two scans then it will allow otherwise it will stop so this project i was working upon in the recent past and uh, we have made use of tech stack like Spring, JP, and uh, microservices. And uh, prior to that, uh, uh, I've worked upon banking and financial domain projects as well. So there I've worked upon uh, payment matching and approval, so payment related thing, uh, payment acknowledgement related thing. So there I've worked. And uh, first company was a startup company. So it was mostly in education sector. So, yeah. OK. How much you rate yourself in Java? Uh, so five around 3.5 okay what about the spring boot and microservices uh, same 3.5 to 4 because it's a it's continuous learning thing okay okay what about the mic uh, this one cloud technologies aws or azure okay. or gcp yeah so uh, basically there were separate teams which was associated with Azure in the current project and uh, in the past project actually we, I even got chance to meet with the team there were separate team who manages the cloud part so in the current project actually there were a separate team uh, like three people were there in the development part and three people were there in that uh, uh, Azure part so they were working on Azure cloud so they were doing some configurations and then they were working on the deployment from um, transferring from on-prem to cloud. So those things they were working upon. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's start the discussion. Can you, can you tell me about the Java 8 features? Yeah. So Java 8, there are a lot of features came like Lambda function came, functional interface came, the default and static methods came, uh, stream came. So yeah. these all things came in Java 8. Okay. And optional, Any others? Yeah, optional class also came. Okay. What is the difference between functional interface and normal interface? Yeah, in functional interface, there will be at least one uh, abstract method and there can be n number of default and static methods. Uh, but in case of uh, normal interface, it can uh, have like n number of abstract methods. Okay. Yeah. Anything else apart from this? Yeah, so there will be like, uh, uh, there are multiple inbuilt uh, uh, functional interfaces like predicate consumer, which uh, defines a specific property based upon that abstract method. So uh, let's suppose I'm in mm -hmm. terms of uh, predicate, so it will be having test method. So it will check whether that condition is true or false, so it will return data based upon that. So within filter method, if you see, then okay. it is having predicate functional interface being used. Uh, yeah, so it actually, make, if you are making use of uh, uh, Lambda function or within streams, so uh, there actually we are making use of functional interface, which accepts data as an argument, not a normal interface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. 
uh, can you tell me about the difference between streams and collections? Uh, actually, stream works upon collection. So uh, collection is entirely a total framework which consists of uh, list, queue, set, interface. So uh, and in case of streams, if we consider that a stream actually doesn't hold the state of the object, it uh, performs the entire operation lazily when it is getting uh, terminated with a terminal operation. So uh, this is a thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can, can you tell me about the array list and a linked list? What is the difference between array list and a linked list? Yeah, so basically when we have to uh, do the search operation, then actually array list uh, is basically used and it internally makes use of uh, dynamic array and uh, it is actually heterogeneous in nature when uh, we have to store multiple data types uh, then we can make use of array list and we, when we have to uh, see like at a run time there can be like increase uh, the capacity of the site so in that scenario array list will be used because if you are making use of array we have to specifically state the size of it but in case of array list it can be increased at run time and when we are doing uh, actually it is index based operation gets performed over here in array list so uh, that's why uh, when we are doing search operation, then array list will be faster. And in linked list, actually, it is uh, it works based upon the memory operation. So uh, it basically stores the data at a specific node in the memory, and uh, those uh, nodes are getting associated with the memory corresponding to that particular node. So uh, when we are doing any modification, like when we have to update, insert, or delete any node, then in that scenario, linked list will be faster because it is not indexed based. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a monolithical application mm -hmm. deploying web logic and the monolithical application consists of 40 different operations. Okay. So I want to convert it into uh, microservices. What is your approach? What is the design that you're going to follow for this? Okay. So uh, first we have to group all the related uh, functionalities together. So uh, we have to see like what all properties are associated with respect to payments or whatever uh, classes or properties or fields are there with respect to notification. So we have to uh, see first from the high level design perspective, like uh, what all classes are or packages are there corresponding to that uh, uh, particular functionality. So we have to group all those functionality together and we have to put it in one microservice. And after segregation of all the microservices, then we have to uh, do the configuration for them. Like we have to provide uh, the data source like database, Username, password, and everything, and we have to do all the configuration, and then we will uh, make the changes. We will make independent microservices will be designed, and we can assign it to separate individuals. That will they will work separate separate microservices. So like that can perform, and we have to follow like a solid design principle. We have to follow like each class would maintain only solid own. design principle. Any other principles are there? Only solid design. Uh, so, uh, what design pattern you will follow first? Uh, design pattern uh, totally depends. Like, uh, if there is a, like object creation uh, will be there, then we have to make use of singleton design pattern or factory design pattern. So, uh, whenever like one instance needs to be created. No, no. For no. if I am asking for microservices, mm -hmm. what design pattern you will follow? Uh, we can follow uh, for distributed transaction. We can follow Saga design pattern so there are actually uh, multiple events uh, gets triggered for success as well as failure so in that scenario it will be helpful so uh, because uh, they are sensitive data being stored in db and when we have to do the rollback so in that uh, scenario that distributed transaction needs to be handled so uh, choreography design pattern is very helpful there and uh, Actually, there will be like uh, uh, one point of uh, contact, like broker will be there in between. So it will actually help communicate between all the microservices and it will send data from one microservice and send it to another microservice. So, like that, the uh, communication will happen and they will get notified, like at what stage the flow is in currently. 
so based upon that the execution will follow so there will be like uh, okay success. i reiterate the question uh, what is the difference between uh, decomposition pattern and saga design pattern So, uh, actually, I think uh, in Saga Design pattern, there will be like one uh, broker based upon that it communicates the data from one microservice to another based upon what data has been passed and the event gets triggered. But uh, in case of uh, decomposition, I think uh, there can be like multiple point of contacts where uh, they can send the data based upon the event notification getting triggered. And uh, parallelly, the, uh, the uh, event will be notified like till what stage the uh, event is processed successfully. So okay. Okay. Suppose I have a service A, service A hits service B, and service B hits service C. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, service C is down. But I need to send some information from service B to service A. Uh, what is your approach? Yeah, so uh, design such a way that when your failure is happen, also you will send some info to the service. Here. Yeah, so uh, I mean to say it is all our operations only. Okay. Yeah, so uh, basically, in that case, we can implement a circuit design, circuit breaker design pattern. So uh, there will be uh, like a fallback mechanism will be implemented. So uh, in the properties file, we can uh, give like number of retry attempts, like how many threshold of retry attempts you want. So let's suppose I've given like three. So microservice B will call to microservice C and it will attempt it three times. So if uh, that attempt till three times, it's uh, not coming as status 200. Then after third attempt, it, it actually uh, responds back the default message like uh, that microservice is down or due to some reason it is down. So that default message will be thrown back to the microservice A. So when uh, we are trying to get the body part of that service uh, while fetching the data, then it will uh, state uh, the response with a particular message. So like that we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what type of services you use in the cloud? What type of services? Means which type of services you utilize in the cloud? Like uh, any security related things or any uh, statistical related things? Have you worked? Actually, I don't know. Okay. In PCF, what type of marketplaces you visited and you used? Yeah, actually, in PCF, we have done the deployment part. So, uh, after doing the build and then deployment process will happen. So, uh, they are in the configuration and PCF part. We can see at that particular environment what all uh, data configurations has been uh, set up. So based upon that, we can see the log data and all the things present over there. So mm -hmm. there are separate scripts written for each environment based upon their URLs. So yeah, so those configurations have been there in PCF and we can see the data, all the logs related to our microservices over there. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other cloud services you used? Actually, in our current project, they were using Azure Cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Prior to that, I haven't worked much about cloud. So basically, I was into microservice part. Okay. Okay. I'm done with my set of questions. You have anything? Yeah, basically means uh, what Hello? kind of project you all will be working, means we all will be working. It is it is a back-end project only with okay. uh, whatever the questions I ask, those mm -hmm. things only. Okay. I'm mostly looking at the back-end with the Spring Boot with the cloud. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you so much.